Ben Rosser here, corn specialist with Omafra. Uh, we're here in a cornfield uh, just north of Ridgetown in Kent County uh, looking at sandy knolls. So a field where there's been some issues uh, over the past number of years. Uh, I'm here to, with, in a visit with Jake Monroe. We're going to take a look at some knolls, kind of talk about why it's causing some issues in this field, some diagnostics we've done to try to look at what, uh, what the issues are, and then uh, some, some potential solutions going forwards for how a grower could uh, address some of the issues particularly with these sandy, acidic knolls that we see down here in uh, Kent County. I'm Jake Monroe. I'm a soil management specialist for field crops with Omafra, and I'm here with Ben Rosser, our corn specialist. We're in Kent County, we're in a corn field, and we're looking at a problem situation that came up this spring. So Ben, can you tell us a little bit about what we're standing in here? So I was out with an agronomist one day. Uh, we were in the area, and he mentioned he had this field where the grower is really struggling with corn and soybeans the last couple of years uh, to grow on this knoll. So, you know, there was a, a variety of ideas. You know, one was you know maybe insect issues, being lighter soil, maybe some fertilizer burn on these sandy knolls. You know, could it be pH or some other issues going on as well? Clearly, when we got here, you can really see that the population was really poor, and we were still you know one or two leaf corn at that stage. Um, but quite obviously, these knolls were having issues compared to the rest of the field. What were you looking for in those plants, and and how did you go about um, figuring out what was the the culprit here? So we started digging, looking at roots. You know, it didn't jump out at you like fertilizer burn. You didn't see the blackening of the roots and missing radicals and that sort of thing. Um, you know, the other question was insects. You know, we did find the odd wireworm on here, but when we were digging those plants that didn't emerge, uh, really you couldn't find any feeding on the seeds themselves. So it was kind of started to rule some of those things out in terms of being an issue on the, uh, the knoll. So first thing was let's do some soil samples on this poor area on the knoll and let's do some soil sampling where the corn looks really good uh, once you get off the knoll. You take those cell samples, you send them off to the lab. When they come back, uh, what do you see? What pops out to you? Yeah, so when you put those two soil tests side by side, ones that were uh, poor on the knoll and ones that were on the good spots off the knoll, you know, I think the first thing that really jumps out at you is soil pH, right? So uh, here on the knoll, we had soil pH that was 4.8. And once you get off the knoll, like literally 50, 100 feet off the knoll, we were, uh, I think it was a 6.9. When you get kind of on the marginal areas where the plants were kind of growing okay, but still struggling, uh, you could see some plants where uh, the lower leaves were kind of starting to turn a little bit reddish in color and a little bit of intervenal chlorosis. So of course, the one thing that jumps out when you're looking on a sand soil and you see those kind of symptoms is, uh, you know, magnesium deficiency as well, right? And sure enough, when you look at the soil test values as well, um, on the knoll here, we have magnesium levels of 15. Uh, but once we got off the knoll, you know, our magnesium levels were like 120. Once you found out that soil pH was, was really low on this knoll, uh, tell us about what you did next here. Yeah, so we mentioned the grower, you know, soil pH is low, there'd be a good response to lime. He did ask, you know, I hear corn's pretty tolerant to low pH, just how low do you have to get before you get a response? And, you know, going off the recommendation table, I think a 4.8 would certainly support liming. So we came in, we planted a number of rows by hand. Uh, some rows we put a, a soluble dol dolomitic lime, so that's not only lime, but it's also includes some magnesium with that. We dissolved it in where we were going to plant our corn rows. In other rows we just left bare, uh, no treatment at all, just to see background comparison. Tell us a bit about what you saw before sending soil samples away in terms of uh, soil sample results from the grower at this site. He had this farm grid sampled and he had those uh, right handy on his phone. So again, when we were asking the pH question, he brought that up and he looked on his phone. And you know, I think it was the grid where we were standing at the time uh, came back as being a little bit under seven. So you would look at that and say, well, it's, it's probably not a soil pH issue, right? But of course the issue with grid sampling is you're really not uh, necessarily catching these problem spots like this sandy knoll uh, in this grid that was sampled. And so that's where, you know, the targeted uh, zone sampling or, you know, trying to target your problem areas with soil sampling um, really comes out and you know catches some of these issues when you go out looking for them compared to a grid sample approach. And you could see with the soil profiles that we we pulled from this knoll as well as further down the slope position you could see very easily how um, taking a couple of samples from the knoll and then and then a few samples from just an area even 20 meters away from here would uh, when you mix those you could see how you might end up getting uh, a pH that's in a more normal range for sure. So we pulled two separate cores one on the right hand side from the eroded knoll, the eroded sandy knoll, the other on the left hand side from a lower slope position where the corn is looking very healthy, nice and tall. When you have a soil that's very low in organic matter like we're seeing here, uh, you know, a topsoil depth that's less than six inches and diluted with, with subsoil, um, we've got a, a soil that's susceptible 
to becoming acidic over time and that's exactly what's happened in this case. Uh, you know, we got our uh, soil test results back. Um, obviously where pH levels were low with those soil tests, they do uh, a, a buffer pH measurement on those and those came back as a six on those uh, soil tests. So I guess, you know, for growers wondering about that, what do you do with a soil test value in those buffer pHs? I think for a lot of growers in Ontario, um, you're not necessarily used to dealing with low pH on a regular basis. However, we've got, we do have some low pH soils and we've certainly got situations like this with isolated areas and fields that are low pH. And it's really important to not only look at the pH value once you get your soil test back, um, but also look at buffer pH. So if your field or if your sample uh, tells you through a low pH that you require lime, that buffer pH is gonna provide guidance as to how much lime. Interesting enough, we did look at soil test values which were low in magnesium, uh, but this grower has been actually including magnesium as part of his uh, fertility package in this field. It really speaks to the fact that one, magnesium levels are, are very low and perhaps the rate wasn't high enough. Um, but uh, probably most importantly, it's really speaking to the fact that um, pH and addressing soil pH is the foundation to any soil fertility program. Um, because if you've got a very low pH, as we do in this case, below five, it decreases the availability of many nutrients, including magnesium. You hear this about sands, a lot of issues in pH. Why is this such a, a sandy soil issue? The way that I like to think about it really is, is just that sands have less of an ability to buffer changes from the environment over time. And all soils and all soils that are cropped really are getting acidity over time. And sands, just because they're, they're coarse, they don't have that, uh, they tend to have lower organic matter, they don't have that supply uh, potentially of, of carbonates in them, and they're gonna be more likely to not be able to resist those changes in pH and more likely to uh, become acidic uh, as you crop them over time. So you mentioned that a lot of areas outside of these kind of sand pockets where we've got erosion, probably completely different issue going on there. Instead of uh, you know acidifying with sand, we're yeah. scraping off that topsoil. For sure. So we we see typically in much of the province, especially the parts of the province with complex topography, uh, prone to erosion, prone to tillage erosion, uh, we see actually very high pH conditions on those knolls. And although that certainly creates some challenges and reduces certain nutrients and their availability, um, it can't be managed in the same way and there's no easy fix for those, for those situations. Um, there's no easy fix for this solution either, but we certainly can and should um, address this uh, um, in terms of a sandy knoll, low pH condition um, with, the, with an alignment application.